Selling Online Today, featuring Dave from BigLaces.com. Don't try doing everything yourself. You know, use the experts because you'll be amazed at how much time someone else can actually save you and therefore money. But pick those people wisely. Making a great living by selling online is possible if you know who to turn to for help. Welcome to Selling Online Today, the show that features the winners of the online sales world sharing their stories of domination of eBay, Amazon, or their own sites. Here's your host, Patrick Conlin. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Selling Online Today, the show that brings you all that you need to know to successfully sell online in today's changing environment. We are just thrilled today to have with us Dave from biglaces.co.uk. Hello, Dave. Hello. Wow, just unbelievable having a rummage around just before we came on air on biglaces.com. It's a fascinating website. I know that you were telling me just before we came on air that you run this business with your wife, Cheryl. It seems like you're doing so much for such a small team. I'm just going to hand it right over to you. How did you get into selling laces online? Essentially, it started that I needed some laces for some shoes and I couldn't find the specific laces that I needed anywhere. And this was back in 2006. So I looked on the internet and the only place I could find them was uh, was a little store over in America. But to make it worthwhile, I think the minimum order was something like 10 pairs. So I ordered, I, I really, really needed the laces to the extent I actually ordered all 10 pairs just to get the one I needed and I thought, well, I'll keep the others as spare. I mean, eBay wasn't in its infancy then, but it was certainly only a few years in. And I can't remember whether someone suggested the idea or whether I just stumbled across it. But I thought, well, actually, I only need three. So I'll just I'll put the other seven on there. Maybe some other people will need them. And they sold not hugely quickly, but quickly enough. So I thought, well, I'll order another 10 and just see what happens. And then cut a long story short, we started getting emails from people saying, can you get these in red at all? Can you get them in blue, you know, brown? Can you get them slightly longer, slightly shorter? And the range just grew and grew as we realized that actually everyone was having the same problem, that you can't walk into a shoe shop and and get anything other than, you know, sort of standard black or brown laces. So, um, And then we just started increasing the range as more and more things, you know, more and more different types of footwear came out. And just built the range up from there and um, then got a few brands on board, started stocking their laces because I guess it's not cost effective for them to, to sell individual laces. So quite a lot of the brands, you know, we, we actually stock them in large volumes and then they tend to send people to us to say, if you want replacements, then here's where to go. Yes, yeah. well, I, I understand exactly where you're coming from because... As I was saying just before the show, I also have a bricks and mortar women's shoe shop and it's based in a high street here in Northern Ireland. And we do have a large amount of people coming in to us, especially even men who coming in saying, do you sell shoelaces? And we do have young people coming in too and asking for different colours. So I'm thrilled that I've come across your website. I actually came across it when I was investigating on eBay and on Amazon, I saw that you were everywhere, which yeah. which, which, which is really good. And I look forward to delving into that a little bit more. So you ha- you say you've been selling online from 2006. Amazing, isn't it, Dave, that it started with a need that you had yourself and yeah. couldn't find it. And then you just went for it. For people that are listening to us, we get an awful lot of people that are thinking, oh, should I, I need to set up such a big website and a big investment in this new business I'm thinking of. And I'm thinking inside, no, no, the structure will create itself with the demand. There's no need to spend thousands of pounds initially on all singing and dancing without even checking to see if there's a market need. That seems like that certainly is the way that you proceeded. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think nowadays there are a lot of little niches that probably still exist where there's a need to be filled. The big players, you know, the big brands, they haven't got the machine there to do it or they haven't got the inspiration to do it. Yes. Um, so there's for, for people who aren't maybe out for making millions of pounds but just want a, a fairly easy easy existence in the business world if you like without having to to do what the big brands have to do then there's these little holes to be filled and we filled one of them and i'm sure there's you know plenty of other ones out there that that need to be filled 
Yeah, well, all of these online businesses would be talking about niching down, finding a niche market and just really focusing on it and coming up with the goods properly because of that need. You would be amazed how many people are actually looking for, in this case, big laces. Uh, and and uh, just the other day, I was talking with a, a fellow who owns chilibugs.co.uk and they sell chili sauces all over the world. And you're thinking, I didn't even know there could be 600 different types of chili sauces. And this is a guy from England, uh, like yourself, and he is just flying. And again, he got the idea too in America. So uh, we thank the Americans for that one, yeah. for giving us the odd niche market that needs to be filled. Dave, it's really impressive. I'm astounded myself at how many different color ranges, sizes, widths, lengths that you have on on your website. Do you find that people are coming back looking for more? It sort of seems like it would be a one-off purchase and that for me would seem to be quite hard work. How do you find it? I would probably say 80% of people are just buy a pair and then maybe come back, you know, two years later when they've worn them out. So who are looking for just a practical solution, you know, they literally just want, but there's, there's enough of, you know, I wouldn't have thought there were enough of those people out there to build a business off, but it turns out there is. And then we get the people who I guess just like to, you know, I guess they're more into fashion and like to change things around. So we get people who order repeatedly purely for the sake of changing the laces that are in their footwear to look different, you know, day to day. So we, we kind of cover cover both, if you like. But that is that is a, I would say, for our business specifically because, you know, you expect a pair of shoelaces to last, you know, a reasonable amount of time. Mm-hmm. It, there's not the money to be made there that there would with more perishable goods. But you'd be amazed at how many people do actually come back looking to just refresh existing footwear as well as replacing the mm-hmm. snapped laces. I can understand that. And I can understand the theory behind you know, buy one decent pair of shoes and then change the laces according to her styles, outfits, accessories that you may wear, especially for the younger generation that are wearing sneakers all the time or tennis shoes. It definitely would be a quick and easy way to update your attire that you wear on your feet. So I did notice that you have a great presence on eBay as also on Amazon, as also with your own website. Which marketplace do you like the best? Um, I would say, well, I think I prefer our own website just purely because you have most control over it. Nice. Um, but um, in terms of visibility, I guess it would be Amazon. Although they all, you know, they all have their, their positives and negatives, don't they? So yeah. I think by using all three, you kind of, you offset the, the positives and negatives of each one by covering it with the other two. Yes, it's one of those things that... You know, whether we like it or not, eBay and Amazon kind of own the customer, whereas on the website, ultimately, you can market better to your own customers that come through your website. Yeah. And it really is the art of being able to lure, in a positive sense of the word, customers from your Amazon and eBay stores to actually come back to your website so that you can engage more freely with them. And that certainly can be done through having little flyers that go inside or little cover letters and so on. Uh, would you agree with that sort of way of proceeding? Absolutely. That's exactly how, how we do it is, you know, encourage them with a business card inside that pushes them towards the website itself. And with the website itself, would you spend a lot of money on your Google AdWords and things like that? Or is it, I, I actually noticed that your SEO seems to be very good because I just Googled big purple laces and I popped that into google.co.uk and you came up number one through organic search. So yes. is that more your strategy or is that just something that's built up over the years? Exactly that. We don't use AdWords anymore. In fact, no, that's a lie. We, we use AdWords very minimally, but I used it quite heavily in the when we first started out to actually get yourself that kind of visibility because there's no other way to do it yes. other than slowly building up the, the reputation on Google. And then we went you know, up. I basically put most of my effort because my interest is more in the kind of the computer side of the business okay. um, and SEO. So I put all my effort into researching and getting us high organically. And then as that obviously as that built, then we could drop the, the AdWords. 
because for a low markup item like shoelaces, you can't really afford to be spending much on pay-per-click. Yes, I understand that. Are you aware of the new concepts that have come out in, over the last couple of years where product listing ads, where it actually shows the image next to the ad? They're actually a lot cheaper, so to speak, than the traditional pay-per-click text ads as such and quite good for mobile so some people would swear by that but i can understand if it is a low valued item that you would be wanting to work on your own seo would you agree with the philosophy that some paper click companies would come across and say well you know google will never really actually let you get the upper hand too much because ultimately they do want you to spend money on advertising um i've been surprised at how successful the the organic side has been given that we don't give a lot of money to Google via AdWords. In the first couple of years when we did use it quite heavily, you know, we were paying. So, yeah, it has surprised me that they have let us get so high up, given that we don't, you know, our AdWords don't really appear high up at all because we don't offer much in terms of bids. Yes. Well, it's one of those things that you're constantly scratching your head to try and work out the best way. And ultimately, I would tell a lot of business owners here locally that, you know, they'd often say to me, oh, Amazon, 15% going to them and eBay, 15% commissions going to them. And I'm kind of saying, well, listen, if you have a website, you're not just going to be found. You're going to have to invest some time and money into getting it up there, whether it be through hiring a professional SEO team or educating yourself in the case that it sounds like you yourself have done or spending it on good. Google AdWords, but there is a cost to the sale. That's right. That was one of the one of the worst decisions I probably ever made was poo pooing Amazon for so long, purely because I looked at the fifteen percent. But actually, when you think about it, fifteen percent of you know, if you factor that in, our Amazon sales now eclipse eBay and our own website put together. So you know, I wish I hadn't done that for so long, but live and learn, don't you, as you go through. You do. And Amazon, yes, you know, the the old cliche that you'll hear among business owners is the biggest competitor on Amazon is Amazon itself. Yeah. <laughs> Because they are, it's such a technology based business that they have all of the information required. But, you know, I love Amazon too. I have to admit it. There's something really refreshing. I don't mind giving them that 15% because I spend that and more on my own website. So I do see the importance. And it's just the sheer volume of people that shop only on Amazon. You're really cutting yourself off. In the ideal world, I suppose, if you had 30% of your sales on Amazon, 30% of your sales on eBay and 30% of sales on your website, well then you're really tripling the opportunity to to make sales by having them on all marketplaces. Yeah, absolutely. However, Dave, it is complex. And if you have that amount of shoelaces, surely there must be some software that you're using. Do you link it all together or is it purely a manual thing for you? It's pretty much manual. In the, um, I'm not a big fan personally of these, you know, where they automatically swap the stock across mm-hmm. just because of, you know, reviews I've read that when it goes wrong, it's kind of hard to recover from, you know, because it's automatic. And also the fact that it doesn't integrate with the website that we use. Mm-hmm. And of course, the website that we use is organically high on Google. So I'm not in a hurry to switch that. But I've, I've never actually used them. So I can't say that the automatic things aren't useful because I've never used them. Well, speaking from someone who has used them and who has needed to use them from the very beginning, you can imagine the the multi-variations of, as they would call them, parent and child products within the shoe business. One shoe, one style, one colour, size 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. There's an awful lot of variations there, so we had to very quickly get our multi-channel end of things sorted quick because we were finding, uh, we started like yourself with an eBay shop even before our website went live and we were finding then that we were selling the shoe in the shop. It wasn't coming off eBay properly. Then we were starting to sell on our website, wasn't linking in and it was an absolute nightmare and you don't really get two chances with eBay and Amazon, especially nowadays. They're very strict on their customer reviews and on their feedback metrics. So we quickly evolved into that but just for the record you actually can 
a lot of businesses would start with their first stage website and then would move on to some sort of multi-channel solution. There are several out there, a few of which I would highly recommend. But you can actually work on what's known as the 401 redirects, which would mean that you wouldn't lose your SEO work on the new site. That's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but there are ways and means of not losing it long term. But hey, that's for that's another whole kettle of fish altogether. Yeah. Um, we find that we have one stock base of inventory, and it's the same stock that's on eBay as is on Amazon, as is on our own website. So if it sells on eBay, it will automatically deduct from our Amazon stock and our website stock and our mobile stock all at the same time. Albeit there's an interval of one or two minutes just to allow the updating to happen. But really, really interesting and and exciting and I suppose something which we're all trying to get our heads around properly. So as you said, Dave, you have a small team. Do you upload your own products yourself or do you have someone who helps you there? I pretty much do everything on the technical side because that's the bit that interests me. That's what keeps the business fun for me is the technical side of it. So I, I sort of research and learn those bits and then I give all the bits that I don't enjoy to other people Account, <laughs> yeah. accounting for one <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly the, the art of delegation especially the stuff that we don't like so everything even from photos images they, they all seem very crisp on your website some of your banners are there looks like there's a lot of micro photography even there is that something which you do yourself or do you bring in those images or is that are these all products of your own work um, the banners are um, were supplied by the website company, mm-hmm. um, so that was part of having the website built. They all do banners for you. Um, the actual images, there's a mixture of. We used a photographer to start with, but then we discovered. Um, have you heard of RemoveTheBackgrounds.co.uk? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So we use. We we started thinking. Well, we'll just we'll just try it out. So it's literally take a iPhones are so good nowadays that mm-hmm. take a photo with an iPhone on a, any surface you want, send it across, and, and they'll cut it out and make it look, make the lighting look good. So we've kind of skipped from using an expensive actual physical photographer to just taking the photo ourselves and then sending it across to be kind of digitally enhanced for, I think it's something like 59p a photo, which is ridiculously cheap. Yeah, well, you can actually get it ridiculously cheaper, but it is. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, well, we'll we, we'll have a chat later about that one. But there are a series of free softwares also that you can use yourself, and then there's also a lot of outsourcing companies. But you know, it's all part of the art of doing business, and they're all little small businesses that have flourished off the back of it, like the likes of background removal companies and in the case of laces it's actually even easier because they're they're quite solid colors yeah so a few seconds work would really get that one going the problem is when you have sort of shades and colors that merge into the background that's when it starts to become complicated but anyway that's really getting down to the minutia of things um customer service really is key in the, in the whole online business world do you find that that helps you in your business or is it a pretty straightforward transaction they buy it and they go home and they're happy or, or do you find that area is also important for you yeah very important and it's one of the things that we've really made a point of concentrating on purely because of personal experience you, you know what it's like when you you buy from a company and that first transaction really sets the tone for whether you're going to go back again, which is probably why Amazon's so successful, isn't it? Is that mm-hmm. you know they really they really are customer oriented in terms of solving problems. Absolutely. Certainly in my experience, and that's why I go back because I know they're going to sort any problem out. So we we pretty much copied that, if you like, that kind of model. Mm-hmm. So we'll being proactive with solving problems is one of the things that we really really focus on. So yes, absolutely. Word of mouth, I mean, is is huge in marketing terms for us. The number of people we get come in saying, you know, someone suggested I come to you and this is what I need. And it's taking time to answer those those emails, even if it is just going to result in the sale of one pair of laces. But if that mm-hmm. person goes off and tells five more people, you know, and they all tell five more people very quickly, you know, that one email you bothered to reply to can get you, you know, a lot of sales. Yes, and how long are those laces that are 60 centimetres? I bet you that there's so many people would be asking those questions, even though it's written on the website, it's there for everyone to see, but people still ask, and you've got to be there to answer those questions. That's right. You'll know yourself that you have to bite your lip sometimes and, and, and just you know yeah. answer the question because 
you know, people don't always read things properly or, or look at images properly and everyone's kind of fast paced moving, aren't they? And you just have to be there to to answer it or send that, the link that they need, even though they could have searched for it themselves. But, you know, it, like I say, if that sale goes well, then you might get another one from them or from their friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's time well invested, I think, personally. Yeah. Well, have there been any nice experiences within your lo- online business, like unexpected orders that all of a sudden you, you woke up and said, wow, I wasn't expecting that? Last year it was. I don't, I don't know if you're aware of the, the campaign that Stonewall introduced for football players to wear rainbow laces all right, okay. to, um, to highlight the issue of homophobia in football. Yes. Um, and they basically, on the back of that campaign, they wanted to distribute laces themselves through their website and also they were in team with Paddy Power so we we woke up one morning to an email saying you know can you do us x thousands of pairs of rainbow colored laces and I don't think at the time it was something we supplied I, mean, I, I can't honestly remember the first time round, it wasn't something that was supplied but you know we got onto the, the people who supply us and, and said is this possible and they said yes and then that snowballed and the orders just kept coming in as these things just kept selling out of the, the Paddy Power outlet. So that, that was a very nice month or so. Very busy, but yeah. very nice, obviously, in business terms. Yeah, as Richard Branson would say, you know, just say yes and work out the way afterwards. That's, to that's pretty much it. Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> See how you can do it rather than just saying no because it's going to be too difficult. Mm-hmm. Well, there is uh, obviously some collateral that comes from other people's marketing campaigns. What about the marketing of your own business? Is that something that you do yourself or do you outsource that? Again, we, we rely mostly on organic Google mm-hmm. placement and word of mouth. We don't really market it any other way, to be honest. I guess because of the nature of the product, if you need a pair of shoelaces, you know, you're either going to try in a store or you're going to Google shoelaces. We're not really competing in the same way that a lot of other businesses are because it's just a you know a buy and sell tra- or, or a sell transaction isn't it yeah. um they're not buying into a brand or a concept it's just i need to tie my shoes up you know yes. you sell the thing i need and therefore as long as your website looks good enough and your price is right then then we'll buy it so we don't really heavily market to be perfectly honest I, I guess just thinking, I mean, I am bursting with a couple of ideas, certainly, that. but uh, I suppose really if you're buying a pair of Dr. Martin red laces, you know, what else can you upsell even? I suppose, you know, there's just a few things that can really go along with that, whether it be the protective sprays or some sort of special waxes for the laces, I don't know. But it isn't the same as perhaps in the shoe business where if they buy the, the women's shoes, they may want to have a matching bag or a matching fascinator for their wedding outfit. It's just one of those things so interesting nonetheless social media big buzzword nowadays people talking about all the time twitter and facebook do you have a presence on on those well i know you have a good facebook presence but what about the likes of facebook and twitter we do use facebook and twitter but very sporadically purely because again because it's shoelaces uh, i don't know about you but i don't like to be bombarded by Something, you know, I've bought something to solve a problem and then yes. I don't need a year's worth of Facebook yes. links and, and all sorts of, almost like it's an excuse to just try and increase your presence. So we literally just post every now and then if there's something worth posting, like quite often um, photos that people have sent us in that are a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's about it. Again, because I don't like the idea of annoying people with it's shoelaces and that's great if you're into shoelaces, but how many people really are so I don't want to f- try filling up people's Facebook pages with information about shoelaces. That, that is a good, unique, different point, getting people to send in the shoelaces. I mean, I'm looking at the neon green Converse. Bits, yeah, there's really long one. And I'm like, whoa, there are some size of shoelaces. But um, at the same time, it has that entertaining factor to say, oh, what's all that about? So ultimately, it is indirectly a good marketing tool. What about review systems? Do, you know, we all have our experience with Amazon and eBay. Do you like that concept? Does it intimidate you? Do you feel worried about it or confident? I'm not worried about it. I mean, you're always going to get people that complain. You're never going to be perfect. And I think how you handle the complaint says as much about you as a business as, as what the complaint is about in the first place. So we try to sort of respond where appropriate to any complaint that somebody has. Quite obviously, you want to stop it before the review gets put on there. Um, so if somebody's emailed in to say, you know, they're too short, too long, or they've snapped after a week, you know, it's about solving the problem as quickly as possible because at the end of the day, it's, it is probably your fault. And therefore, if you get it solved, then you've got a happy customer as opposed to someone who's going to 
go on and try and destroy you on the on the mm-hmm. feedback. Well, just a recent case that we had in our own business was sometimes people will return the shoes. Shoes are, are quite hard because of the multi-size variations. So mm. they either fit or they don't. So we get an awful lot of returns, more so than perhaps the average e-commerce business. But that's part of it too. And um, that's not an issue for us. But sometimes uh, when you can choose the reason why you're returning the shoes on the eBay drop down menu, some people will just say, oh, not as described, even though they that's were right, as described. Yeah. Yep. And that's quite quite hard because then you've got to go through a process and call up eBay and say, well, listen, like they were as described. Somebody just said they weren't just to quickly get it off their plate. So there are some things that obviously the, the different marketplaces do have to work on to try and make it easier for us as sellers to protect that precious feedback that we're all trying to maintain. Yeah. Um, if you were going to give any advice to someone starting an e-commerce business today, what, what advice would you give them? I would probably say uh, don't try doing everything yourself. You know, use the experts because you'll be amazed at how much time someone else can actually save you and therefore money. But pick those people wisely. You know, don't just choose the first person that you see on Google or whatever. Use use recommendations. Like, for example, the accountant. The accounts is so heavy and there's so many kind of trip wires that it is better to use an expert. And you'll probably find that their, their knowledge will almost pay for themselves. We've yes. certainly found that over the you know the time you would have to spend researching different VAT and you know PAYE and mm-hmm. all of those other technical aspects. Whereas if you get somebody else to do that, you know you're going to pay them a, a lot of money, but it's probably the amount of time it's going to save you. You can concentrate on growing your business. It almost almost evens out. So that would probably be my biggest bit of advice: is don't try to be the expert at everything and, and think that there's you know there's yes. not people out there who can help you. But on the flip side, keep the stuff that you enjoy. You know, I really love the technical side of it. So I would never outsource the kind of back end yes. um, system because that's the bit I really enjoy doing. It's making sure that everything works and so keep hold of the bits that you find fun because at the end of the day, if it's not fun, then you're not really going to put as much effort into it, are you? No, there's no point really. It, it has to be, you have to enjoy the work. That's yeah, one thing. Definitely. If you had a magic wand, what would you love it to do within your business right now? Uh, magic I would love it to be able to pick the correct lace out of the correct box from several hundred and put it in the correct envelope <laughs> seal it up and, and put it in the sack because it's time consuming yes um, that's probably what I'd want it to do to be perfectly honest yeah well that's a, a good thing to want that picking and packing process as they call it can be quite a headache at times and Definitely. Uh, you know I could have swore I sent out that exact item and oh uh, so there is an element of, of human consciousness that must go into it dave it has been absolutely thrilling uh, chatting to you about your website i'm just going to remind everyone again that they should head over to biglaces.com and that's where they can find everything they need to know on all of the different size variations and colors and it's just there's such a variation of laces so go and check that out folks that's really interesting and dave thank you very much is, is there anything any questions that you'd like to throw out there for us or shall we just answer those ones off air the only one was going to be how to get how to get the uh, cheaper background whitening yes but, um, well we'll I maybe uh, we'll talk about that after yeah well we we do also have a resource page over at selling online today oh, right and um, we have a lot of good things there for all of the business owners. So we, we'll pop up a few ideas on the background removal. And we're in the process of creating a small course at the moment too, where you can use free softwares to be able to to do that. And we're just going through a few tutorials now to help people be able to remove the background. Well, thank you very much. It's been great chatting to you. And we'll catch you later, Dave. Thanks very much. Take the time right now to go to sellingonlinetoday.com and gain instant access to tons of free resources to help you in your online selling journey. We'll see you next time on Selling Online Today.